This is Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. In Psalm 103, the Lord makes a promise to redeem our lives from destruction. In both the Old and the New Testament, we read repeatedly how the Lord protected his people. There is a hedge of protection around the lives of those who honor the Lord. I invite you to join me for part two of the message titled, A Hedge of Protection. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. We're going to go over the book of Exodus, and I'm going to read a number of scriptures, and y'all please be patient with me because these are all inspired by the Holy Spirit. They're all good verses here. So we're in the book of Exodus chapter number eight and verse number 20. And we're talking about this hedge as it shows up in other portions of the Bible. Let's talk about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, those first five books. Notice how there's a hedge around God's people in these chapters. Notice Exodus chapter 20. Now, this is the fourth plague that came on Egypt. There was a total of 10, but the fourth plague was the flies. And in Exodus chapter 8 and verse number 20, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he goes out to the water and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me, or else, if you do not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you in your service, in your people, and into your houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be filled with swarms of flies, and also the ground on which you stand. But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen. Now, just to set this in context, if you're a child of God, you identify with the Goshen people, okay? Yeah. Egypt was always a type of the world. Land of Goshen was always a type of where God's covenant people were. And the Bible says, on that day, I was set apart the land of Goshen where my people dwell so that no swarms of flies shall be there, that you may know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Notice verse 23. Thus, I will put a division between my people and your people. Now, that's pretty brave. Moses says to Pharaoh, hey, there's going to be a division between God's people and your people. Oh, I tell you, I'm preaching better than y'all are reacting. <laughs> I mean, that's a powerful thought. To say, I'm going to tell you a little secret here. There's a division, there's a distinction between the people of God and the world. And so we've got to live that way. And so he said, I want to tell you a little something, Pharaoh. I'm going to, God's going to put a distinction between his people and your people. Tomorrow this sign shall happen. And the Lord did so. And there were great swarms of flies in the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses throughout all the land of Egypt. The land was ruined by the swarms of flies. That was the fourth plague. When I come across that verse 23 there, I will put a division between my people and your people. See, that's a hedge of protection right there. I'm going to claim that hedge of protection next time we're out barbecuing that those flies are rebuked. <laughs> See, I'm getting re fresh revelation. It's coming to me today right now. Okay, so the book of Exodus chapter number 11. Now, here's another one, Exodus chapter number 11. We're talking about this hedge that's found in the Pentateuch, these first five books of the Bible. Notice this hedge that's mentioned here, Exodus chapter 11 in verse number four. It says, so Moses said, thus says the Lord, about midnight I will go out in the midst of Egypt. Now, we're still into the plagues that were on Egypt. is God's judgment for not letting the nation of Israel out of captivity. And every firstborn of the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the hand mill and all the firstborn of the cattle. Notice even the cattle firstborn die. Verse 6, there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has never been or ever will be again. Now notice verse number 7. 
but not a dog shall growl against any of the people of Israel. Not even a dog is going to growl among any of the people of Israel, either man or beast, that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Now, why am I saying that, y'all? That's a hedge of protection right there. There's a distinction between that group over there and that group over here. These are called the sheep and those are called the goats and there's a hedge of protection between the two of them. So I want us to believe that today. I want us to raise our level of expectation and raise our faith level to say, Lord, I thank you for a holy hedge of protection around my life. And remember, Job didn't just pray it around his life, but he prayed it around his family. And that's what we want. We want that hedge. Now, here's another example. In the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse number 21, it says, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lambs for yourselves according to your clans. Now, this is the Passover. This is the culmination of all these plagues, the death of the firstborn. But this would be God's protection for the nation of Israel. And kill the Passover lamb, take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Stay behind the bloodline. Does that make sense? Stay behind the bloodline. And there's a message there, y'all. We've got to stay where we need to be with God. You know, we've got to walk with the Lord. We can't be out doing the things of the world and living the way of the world and expect God's full protection. We need to be behind the cross. We need to be behind what the Lord is doing. Notice verse number 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the house and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You know what that's called? That's called a holy hedge right there. That house was protected by God Almighty. And you know what we need to pray over our homes? Lord, we pray divine protection over this house in the name of Jesus. We just believe that in the name of the Lord, there's divine protection over our house. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And what happens is, is that whenever we come across scripture and we gain light and we gain understanding, then all of a sudden we go, wait a minute, I need to be appropriating that in my life. I need to be claiming that. I need to be standing on that in my life. Now notice Exodus chapter 23 in verse number 22. This is a picture of God's hedge. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and I'll be an adversary to your adversaries. Isn't that powerful? In other words, I'm going to fight the people that are fighting you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on your side. I'm going to stand with you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand guard over your life. Now we're going to 1 Samuel chapter 23. You know, 1 Samuel is a picture of whenever David was running. And 2 Samuel is a picture when David was reigning. So in 1 Samuel, have the picture of whenever there was a lot of hostility, you know. And you have a lot of craziness going on in 1 Samuel verse, chapter 23, verse 14. And David remained in the strongholds in the wilderness, in the hill country, the wilderness of Ziph. Notice this. And Saul sought him every day, but the Lord did not give him up into his hand. So there's a picture where Saul was on the prowl. Saul is jealous. Saul's doing everything he can to kill David. But the scripture says, but God did not deliver him up into his hand. What is that? That's a hedge of protection. Now, we don't wrestle flesh and blood. Now, the devil works through people. That's undeniable. But at the end of the day, we're not fighting against personalities. It's principalities. But what we've got to realize is behind the scenes, the devil is working. And we got to say, I come against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Devil, I bind you in Jesus' name. I rebuke you and I command you to get out of here right now. 
You say, well, I don't ever do that. Well, you should. Because that's what the Bible tells us to do. Okay, so notice 1 Chronicles chapter number 16. We're just going through some of these passages in the Old Testament. To me, this is a powerful one right here. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 19. It says, now God's talking about the nation of Israel here. They're sojourners. They're going through this wilderness experience. They go into the promised land. And he's talking about how virtually every battle you fought, you were the underdog. Every battle you went through, it wasn't something you were forecasted to win. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse number 19, it says, when you were few in number of little account in sojourners in it, God's speaking to Israel, and you were wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. And notice this statement. He rebuked kings on their account. So Israel's this small group of people. They're traveling, you know, and they're always on enemy territory. They're always outnumbered. But God said, I allowed no one to oppress you, and I would rebuke kings on your account. You remember that happened in the Old Testament whenever they would try to attack and the Lord would appear to them and said, don't touch him. There is a hedge here. God has always done that for Israel. Now, somebody said, Pastor, all those Bible verses, every one of them you've read today, they're all Old Testament. Here's the good news. Hebrews 8, 6 says, we have a better covenant with better promises. So if it worked in the old, whoa, it's going to super duper work in the new. Can I get an Amen. In other words, if that was the inferior covenant and the one that we have has superseded that one, well then, wow, think about what God has promised to us today. Now here's Job chapter 5. God says, in famine, he will redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the lash of the tongue and shall not fear destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine... You shall what? That was kind of weak. At destruction and famine, you shall laugh. Then she shall not fear the beast of the earth. You know, so it's a picture of us being victorious. You know, a lot of Christians look like they've been sucking on a lemon. <laughs> they do. They look defeated. They talk defeated. They are victims of... You know, God's plan is not that we're victims. God's plan is that we're victorious. We're overcomers. The devil's under our feet, that we have more than enough, that we're serving El Shaddai, the God of plenty. So we need to just realize that the Bible says at destruction and famine, you're going to laugh at those things. Why? Because I'm going to take care of you. There's going to be a divine protection. How does God do this protection? There's a number of ways. Thanks for joining me for this message titled, A Hedge of Protection. Whether you're conscious of it or not, God has surrounded your life with a wall of protection. The word hedge in the Hebrew presents the idea of a fence that protects. You can approach life with the assurance that the Lord has a wall of protection around your life. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.